Hello students, how are you all? I hope all of you are good during this lockdown. Please be safe, stay at home, be safe. In the previous video, I had explained you about the process of rearing the fleece from the ship, how the fleece is being reared and after rearing, how it is being converted into the fabric and how these fibers fabric are being used to make clothes right in the previous video each and everything about related the rearing of sheep from where they are being found especially about the sheep but in this video i am going to explain you about the wool from other animals especially the wool which are being obtained from the goat like kashmiri mohara angora wool camel wool vicona and alpaca first of all before starting the video have you ever thought also that uh, except sheep which animals are giving the wool i hope that uh, you may have thought but today we are going to discuss i hope that you can write these names in your notebook and i am explaining also so you can listen and you can just see the wood right now before i think just listen what i am saying because you are listening must be very carefully if you are listening very carefully then you can get a good amount of knowledge so we already know that we get wool from many animals like sheep goat camels and rabbits we also get wool from yaks llamas and alpacas now the first topic is kashmiri wool we get kashmiri a rare fine soft wool from the kashmir goat the kashmiri fiber is used to make the world famous pashmina shawl so remember dear students kashmiri kashmiri goats gives the five women's fleece and from their fleece which is being a very world famous shawl called pashmina shawl it is being obtained with the help of kashmiri goat now if i talk about the mohair what is mohair mohair is obtained from the fleece of angora goat mohair is obtained from the fleece of angora goats it is very fine it is very soft it is strong it is lustrous and warm mohair can be dyed it can also occurs naturally in many colors the fine hair from younger goats is used to make clothes the hair from older goats is thicker so it is used to make carpets angora wool is obtained from angora rabbits angora wool is obtained from angora rabbits it is very fine and the fluffy wool it is also known as the silky texture angora wool is obtained from angora rabbits it is also known as a fluffy wool uh, this and also called silky texture have you heard about the camel wool camel wool is also soft and warm the fine hair of the camel is blended with the fine wool to create fabrics suitable for clothes like coats jackets skirts and sweaters so these are the camel wool uses now the last two point is vicuna and alpaca the vicuna fiber is a rare and fine fiber that we get from the vicuna vicuna means a member of camel family which is specially found in south america it is a long fine and lustrous type fiber from that south american camel we get the vicuna fiber we get alpaca fiber from the hair of the alpaca what is alpaca alpaca is also a member of camel family which is found in south america the fiber is lightweight strong and lustrous so as we have seen that what are the process of the rearing of sheep the production of wool as i have informed you about the shearing scoring grading carding spinning dyeing and knitting this was the process to make a fiber from the fleece of a sheep similarly when we get the other animals wool like kashmiri kashmiri wool which is specially being obtained from the kashmir goat so make pashmina shawls which is world famous second is mohair the fleece of angora goats which is very lustrous and it can be dyed also it is specially naturally naturally in many colors and it is specially using to make clothes the hair from the older goats is thicker so it is used to make carpets also angora wool is specially being obtained from angora rabbit which is very fine fluffy wool and it is also known as silky texture camel wool is soft and warm the fine hair of the camel is blended with the fine wool to create fabrics 
suitable for clothes like coats, jackets, skirts and sweaters. And the Vicuna fiber, as I already had informed you, it is a fiber which is obtained from camel and that type of camel is especially found in South America. They are having long, fine and lustrous type fiber. Last but not the least, Alpaca, which is a fiber which is also found from the member of camel family, which is especially being obtained in South America. This fiber is very light widget and it is strong and lustrous also. So these were the history of wool from other animals. Now we are going to discuss the another animal fiber that is silk. In the previous video or in the previous section we have studied about the animal fibers, especially wool or fleece and how they are being specially being converted into the fabric. Now we are going to study a special animal fiber that is called silk. What is silk? Silk is an animal fiber that we get from the silk worm. Silk worm you may have seen it is just like a, a butterfly, small butterfly you can say. So from that type of animal Silk is an animal that fiber we get from the silk worm. So first of all, how is the life cycle of a silk worm? Here as I have represented this figure, you can see this figure. In this figure, this is the mulberry leaf. On the mulberry leaf, the silk worm lays eggs and as the eggs develop, it hatches and then it becomes larva, larva converts into the pupa and then it becomes the adult silk moth and again it goes to give eggs on the mulberry leaves. So let's start. The silk moth goes through the four distinct stages during its life cycle from the egg to the adult moth. The entire cycle does not take more than a couple of months. Means maximum in the two months the same process the life cycle is of maximum of two months. In the two months the process begins and completes till again the adult. So on the, um, this adult silk moth lays eggs on the mulberry leaves after hatching the eggs, they convert into the larva, again larva convert into the pupa and again from the pupa, the adult silk moth comes out. So, the female silk moth lays about 300 to 400 eggs at a time which has within to the 7 to 14 days. The egg stage forms the first part in the silk moth's life cycle. This is the first part, all of us know, the female silk moth lays the eggs and they do not lay lay egg of one or two days, lay eggs of 300 to 400 eggs at one time. So after 7 to 14 days, means within two weeks, they hatch these eggs and then they come out and the first life cycle of the silk worm is eggs. Second, when an egg hatch, a silk worm crawls out. So from this egg, the silk worm crawls and comes out. This is the larva of the silk moth initially the larva can feed only on the tender of mulberry leaves however during the growth of the phase it can eat tougher mulberry leaves as well the larval stage lasts for about 21 days means as i have told you the whole life cycle is only and only of two months so as you have said within the two weeks after the two weeks they crawl the eggs and they becomes larva before that they are specially eating the nutrition they get from the mulberry leaves only and as they tougher the mulberry leaves they come to the stage within the 21 days means till the third week they become larva eventually the larva first build a web around its support its body to start secreting fine proteins now how they will get the fine protein so they make a web just like a spider they also make a web around it and that web is only the main form of cycle so as they make web around it slowly slowly they get all the nutrition from that web and after making the web so they get developed into the first thing is that pupa the third stage of the silk as i have informed you about the third stage filament which are hardened on exposure to air spin a cocoon around him itself so as you can see as this larva build a web series web around it everywhere web 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 so this web filament which specially harden on exposure to air to spin a cocoon they become a formation of cocoon around itself the larva at this stage is called the pupa 
this stage is called pupa means around it they are just making the web around it and after that they try to harden the exposure of the air to spin to a cocoon and this stage is called pupa from this pupa the silk fibers are obtained from this cocoon the color of the cocoon varies depending upon what the silk worm it it can range from white to golden yellow mean, remember this is the main form from which the silk fiber is obtained and this specially it can give you from white to yellow color and this things depend that what this larva is eating from which part of the leaves they are getting the nutrition and whatever they eating that decide the color of the fiber of a silk as the pupa undergoes many changes inside the cocoon the pupa takes around 10 to 40 days to form an adult moth which breaks cocoon and comes out means this take 10 to 15 days means two week one three week and two five week and this is the six to seven eight three means you just remember this pupa is the main form this pupa undergoes many changes around this stage as the cocoon is there the changes the pupa takes around 10 to 14 days to come out and become an adult moon which breaks the cocoon and comes out so in this cocoon only in this pupa only the same fiber is obtained now the next topic is our sericulture have you heard the name sericulture in time your life what is sericulture Epiculture, sericulture, horticulture, you may have heard the name. I am telling you. The rearing of silk worm, the rearing of silk worm for the production of silk is known as sericulture. The rearing of silk worm, the rearing of silk worm for the production of silk from the silk worm is called sericulture. The rearing of silk worm for the production of silk is known as sericulture. The major activities involved in the sericulture are cultivation of food for the silkworms, rearing of the silkworms, for the production of raw silk, reeling the cocoons and for unwinding the silk filaments and other final process like twisting, dyeing, weaving and finishing. Let's remember the sericulture from how the silkworms give the silk and what are the processes I have, I have explained you. These are all the processes involved to give the silk. Fiber. As you have seen, the sericulture method is also being used to obtain this sericulture. In the next video, we will study about the production of silk and the health hazard of workers in the sericultural factory. Before that, I have explained you something by saying only the board in the previous part of this video. You can see that as I have explained you something about the other animals which we which we get wool also and uh, silk and sericulture method. I hope all of you have understood. Whatever you are not understanding, please write that question below this video in the comment box section. So I am not able to understand this question. Please either write the answer or explain again in the next video. So I, am, I will think that yeah, I have explained this thing in the next video. Since you are not writing, I am not able to understand that you are understanding or not understanding. That's why please, please, please drop your comment into the comment box section so I can understand which type of doubt you are facing. And second thing, as in one of the video, I had got one comment about, sir, your voice is not coming clearly. I'm trying to improve my voice again and again. But you should know that I have to make a lot of videos. So that's why I'm very near to the camera. So I can give you a clear one. If then also you are not getting, then I will write the answers below that video descriptions. You can take the follow-up from the descriptions also. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. That's all for today. Thank you.